Good evening. Hi, David. Hi, Fatima. Good evening, teacher. How are you doing? Good here. Happy. Happy Monday. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> happy I quarantine. Happy. But I know. I have, I have this um, challenge that I've been thinking all day that I wanted to do with you guys. It's a super cool, you know, not to think about anything negative. We're going to do something positive. I don't know if you have seen. I'm just going to make the symbols with my hand and tell me if you have seen this emoji symbol challenge. Have you seen this, 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 this? No. Have you seen that uh -huh. challenge somewhere? No? No. Never? Not yet. Okay, not yet. No. David, no? No. It's the emoji, happy emoji, um, something related to TikTok. I guess it's, it's like a new Instagram or a new um, social network that's out there. So it's very, I don't know, I, my kids showed it to me and I was very intrigued. I really wanted to do it with you guys. I said, like, I'm going to share with you. <laughs> We can actually, yeah. and I wanted to share you the, I wanted to actually share the video for you to have an idea of, and it's very catchy. I have it here in my mind. Like I've been doing it all afternoon, trying to memorize. It's very difficult because it goes really fast and it goes something like this. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So check it out because you're going to be doing it with me to get that positive Monday yeah. out. <laughs> Da, 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 da. When I popped off, then you go gave me just a little bit of love. Da, 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 da. When I popped off, then you go gave me just a little bit of love. Da, 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 da. When I popped off, then you go gave me just a little bit of love. Da, 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 da. <laughs> when I popped off, then you go gave me just a little bit of love. When I popped off, then you go gave me just a little bit of love. Are you trying it? When I popped off, then you go gave me just a little bit of love. When I popped off, then you go gave me just a little bit of love. When I popped off, then you go gave me just a little bit of love. When I popped off, then you go gave me just a little bit of love. Do you think it's, it's easy or is it difficult for you? At the beginning, I thought it was like super difficult. Yeah, it's difficult because it's fast, but the super. song is sticky. <laughs> I know, that's what I said. The it's rhythm. The rhythm is very, you're going to have it here all day tomorrow yeah. doing the, and I like the emoji, so it's a very positive way I wanted to start off the day so if you ever see it I just I just typed hand challenge TikTok and it was the first option on YouTube I've been seeing it on Instagram with a lot of um, actors and famous people celebrity doing it with their kids that's to have you know fun not to think of negative things so it's like super cool so I really liked it I hope you enjoy it and you share it with what does it mean all together all the signs hmm. together what does it mean? I don't know it just said emoji I guess, you know, I guess positive, negative, you know, I don't know. It's quite strange because I don't even uh, know what the symbol uh, it's, is. Uh -huh. It's not a All message. Are, yeah, it's not a message. It's just hand challenge. It's called, emo some of them call it like a emoji hand because these are like emojis that you use on WhatsApp. Like, uh -huh. yeah. So, but it's not negative because the only negative perhaps is the, you know, dislike yeah. and perhaps, I don't know what this is though. What is this? I thought this is no, peace and love, right? But I don't know what this is. Do you guys know? Love. I think it's love. Uh -huh. So, yeah. But it's very catchy. Good evening, Edu. Good evening, Ricardo. Good evening, Claudia. Did you watch the challenge? Nelson, good evening. No, good evening. Good evening, good teacher. Good evening. Have you watched this no. challenge before? We were talking about this challenge. Have you seen it before? No, I haven't seen it. But did you hear the song? Did you guys... Listen to it? No? It, it just uh, a few seconds. Ah, okay. 
So I was telling the guys that this is like something catchy that's going on in media. When I popped off, then you go gave me just a little bit of love. And I've heard it like super positive, like to stay away from negative news. So it's something different that you can try to do with your kids. So a lot of artists are actually doing, you know, doing activities with their kids. And I really liked it. So I wanted to share this with you in case you have this in mind or any type of hand challenge with emojis to do with your kids as a, as a challenge. All right. Okay, so that's how it's called, Hand Challenge TikTok. It's, I guess, a new social network going on. So, guys, today we're going to be talking about relative clauses, okay? So, I want to get started. Last week, we were talking about celebrations. We are talking about holidays. We're going to be relating that to this topic that's actually part of the platform. Um, let me go here, and I'm going to stop sharing so I can reshare something with you. And that is, just give me a minute here. Okay, relative clauses. What do you know? I guess you already did this activity, but what can you tell me about relative clauses? What do you know about relative pronouns, relative clauses of time? What do you guys know? What do you remember from the platform if you guys already did the exercise? Mm -hmm. I'll give you a hint really quick. Another hint. Another hint. When? What can you tell when, me? Where? Which? Uh huh? Yeah, those are relative clauses. But what can you tell me about them? What can you actually tell me about relative clauses? What are they? No idea. It's, it's okay if maybe, you don't know it's okay but tell me three, three, three. Like, three, three. Three. <laughs> i think that is when you want to to explain something that uh, for example uh, when you want to say something like okay that is the person that or who do that thing something like that very good it's actually whenever you want to give whenever you want to elaborate give few details or expand yourself and give more than a few details okay um and what happens is that in i don't know if we do it in spanish i'm not really sure i'm i'm, I'm trying to analyze that part still if we actually elaborate in spanish. we're very detailed i think that not everybody but a lot of us are really really detailed in spanish so, in, but in English is very difficult. People tend to like, what do you want to have today for lunch? Um, whatever, which is not a good word to use. How are you today? Good. So tend to be very straightforward, very short and concise and precise in their answers. So relative clauses help you expand, elaborate and give more details about different topics, depending if it's a person, a thing, an emotion, okay? Depending on the scenario. Now, Something a lot of people do not know is that relative clauses are divided into two, defining and non-defining. What's the difference? Just defining gives a few details, but non-defining are the ones who actually unconsciously give extra information, right? More than enough information to others. So whenever you have defining relative clauses, you use who, like you were mentioning who, which, where, when, and whose. But the non-defining ones are a who, which, when, where, and whose. So we can have both. If you notice the list, some of them are in one side and some of them are in another side. It all depends on the context and how we use them. I have the complete list to the right, so you can actually see it. Who is always going to be referred for people, whom it's referred, well, whom for people but in the subject, and whom for people but in the object because we have subject pronouns the ones that go at the beginning of a sentence or in the subject and the ones that go at the end okay also we have whose for possessions which that refers to animals or any objects that can refer to people things and animals either or all three of them where that refers to places when time why reasons and what things 
this we commonly use whenever asking questions like what's your name where are you from etc but perhaps we have not had the chance to actually use it in context so applying to uh, applying applying this to what we did last week talking about uh, different celebrations and different holidays i came up with them a couple of examples and I want you to start using them. Okay, for example, with holidays and celebrations, um, how can we apply relative clauses to this precise exa ex examples for celebrations? Thanksgiving, for example, taking Thanksgiving, give me examples trying to use, uh, it's a holiday mm -hmm. that, it's a holiday that people gather it's a holiday in where people gather it's a holiday uh, that takes place in november um it's a holiday um uh, that and you start elaborating so that's what i want you to do i want you to start coming up with your own examples okay for for a any type of talk right now we're gonna do it with holidays, but then I'm going to do another exercise non related to holidays, and I want to see how you guys respond. Give me examples. Let's do one with birthdays using relative clauses. And give me examples, complete examples. The more you give me, the more you elaborate, the better. Birthdays? Uh, maybe the the chocolate is a sweet that's why i like it so much okay um let me check here chocolate it's a sweet that's why i like so much mm, okay let me see chocolate is so sweet or is a sweet it's so sweet that why i like so much or too much okay i'm writing on a chat so chocolate is a sweet that i enjoy so much now pay attention to something words have a powerful uh, weight so that i like it's a, sometimes we have words that are very weak and words that are very strong to use so the the more structure or the less you use this type of vocabulary it means that they're a little bit more powerful people use a lot like so instead of using like what other things can you use chocolate is sweet that i enjoy that i give me another one instead of like very much or so much Are you guys there? <laughs> that I love to eat. Okay, that I love to eat. And another thing that you could do also is whenever you don't know, and that's fine if you don't have an answer for me in the moment, what you can do is look for synonyms. Always look for synonyms. So what's the synonym we're trying to en enjoy? Synonyms, okay so look for them look for the word and then try to use what is powerful here from delight okay delight is a very good word to use okay so the idea is for you to start expanding your vocabulary so try to stay away from basic words that you use and try to start looking for new words to use instead of start going with synonyms a lot that's something that i want you to start doing guys okay so instead of using like say I enjoy, I love, because they have a lot of weight whenever expressing yourself in English. And people would rely more or trust more those type of words than the regular, yeah, I like it's like a very weak word. Should I believe him or not? So yeah, so try to use powerful words, okay? Going back to holidays, going back to Holloway. Okay. Um Birthday, yes, yeah. Birthday is a celebration when you get a lot of presents. Okay. 
Let me see. Like this. Birthday is, or birthdays. Birthday is a celebration. A birthday, it would be a birthday is a celebration. When you get. Yes. In where or when? No, when. When you get a lot of presents. Okay. A birthday, because you're talking about it all depends. A birthday or birthdays. Now, try to stay away from using the, because that's for very specific. So try to use a birthday or just birthdays in general, depending on, on what you're trying to say. So a birthday is a celebration where you get a lot of presents. Another example with birthdays and using relative clauses, here's a list so you can have an, a better picture of it. Mm -hmm. I'm writing all these examples on, on the chat so you can have a better view of them. Another example with birthdays? David, Nelson, Claudia, Edu, Eliezer, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other? You can pick another holiday. It doesn't have to be birthdays. It could be any other one. Valentine's Day, Christmas. It could be any other. Um, um, Christmas is a holiday when uh, when you uh, uh, have time with all your family? You see? Christmas is a holiday when you spend time with your family. Uh-huh. Okay. When you spend time, okay, very good. Christmas is a holiday when you get together with your family, gather, spend time, enjoy, share with your family. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very okay, good. Okay, teacher. Any other one? Um, it could be um, New Year is a celebration where you can see a lot of fibers. New Year's is a celebration. Uh, where you can see a lot of fibers. Where you can see many fireworks. Many, so I yeah, have okay. uh -huh, New Year's is a celebration where you can see many fireworks. Very good. I have a question for everybody. What is the difference between? I'm gonna write it here. What's the difference between? See watch and look mm. I think that look is when you really uh, or something really get your attention okay it's not as simple i don't know i i Thing that C is when you just um I don't know you don't ha have all your attention. You don't have all the attention. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, watch TV and see person. Okay, so you watch Different. TV, you watch series, and you see persons. Okay, and look. For, for some uh, specific things. Okay. You are seeking Do something. Do what? Mm -hmm. According to the Merriam-Webster, and I always go with resources, that way you guys get to see it. Um, see means notice or become aware. Okay, of someone or something by using this, just maybe for a moment. Okay, look means to direct your eyes in a particular direction. So, hey, see, 
something's going on. So it just gets your attention and then you go back to what you were doing. But look, you would pay more attention. So see, it's more like general. Look is to actually pay a little bit more attention than see. And watch is the time you spend on a TV. People relate it to TV because you can actually be in front of a computer or a TV watching whole 12 seasons of El Señor de los Cielos, right? I don't know, like the longest or Game of Thrones, which last, I don't know how many seasons. So people can actually spend time in front of a TV or a computer doing something for a very long time. So that's why people relate, they watch to TVs. Okay, so it goes, it, it goes like, if we were to put it like in a scale from zero to 100, watch is like, when you pay the attention the most, it, it would reach like a 90%. And then look around a 60 or 70 percent, and then see it's just momentaneous, it's like a 20 or 30 percent. If we were to put it in that in that way. So fireworks. Do you see fireworks? Do you look? Do you watch or even observe? Because there's another one, observe fireworks. What do you guys think? So whenever it's Christmas time, you're outside with your family and or loses campero and then you're outside and you know the fireworks and what do you do in that moment? Are you paying attention or are you not paying attention to the fireworks? Yes. Yes. So which teacher. which which one would go according to you? Which one would go which one would fit the best? See? Watch or look it would be all the way around it's see look and watch sorry uh, watch watch okay hey watch the fireworks very good and even pay attention whenever you watch a movie they usually use it the most whenever they're paying attention for a very long period of time fourth of july hey let's go and watch the fireworks okay so it depending on on how long you are doing that that action, okay, or that activity. Very good. <clears throat> Any other example you see relative causes? Let's use one with Valentine's Day. Can you give me an example with Valentine's Day? The Valentine's Day is a celebration where the people uh, get uh, a present. Okay, very good. Valentine's Day is a celebration where people get presents. Check it, out, mm -hmm. Check out my chat. Valentine's Day is a celebration where the people know because the people, if you use the word the, use this, you would have to specify which people. The people in El Salvador, the people around the world, the people in Belgium. So you would have to specify where. So, but in this case, since you're not specifying, you're just talking about people in general, you don't use the. That is only used with very specific, for very specific uh, occasions. For example, I'll give you another example there. You don't say the people, like in Spanish, we say, la gente le gusta las cosas, just to give it, a la, o a las personas. La gente, I, don't, I feel it's a little bit disrespectful. Las personas. Las personas les gusta, and we're using that article, and we think that in English we use it as well the same way. But it's quite not very specific, so we use the, this particular article to specify people from where like pupusas. Oh, the people from Santa Ana love pupusas. The people from San Salvador, the people from Guatemala, I don't know. So you have to be specific of who you're talking about. Because if you just generalize it, just people in general, you would get away from the. Because that's very, very specific, but just people is super general. Mm -hmm. 
So it would be Valentine's Day is a celebration where people in general get presents. Okay? Okay. Very good. Okay, now going to another exercise. Just give me a minute here. I'm going to stop sharing here. And I have a little. All of you, we're gonna take turns. I'm gonna say the name and then you're gonna develop the exercise, okay? Are you able to see my screen? Are you able to see this dice? Okay, so let's yeah. do this one. Talk about a person who is famous. Let's see. Nelson, please, can you talk about a, patient, a person who is famous? Number two, tell about a person who is famous. Mm -hmm. Give me an example, Nelson, of somebody who is famous for you. Uh, Claudia, can you help him? Um, mm, I, I don't know. Um, uh, I um, the he's um an an a movie actor and uh, was. Uh, he, he was dear but you can describe him with name mm -hmm. you could say let me give you an example using because the idea is to oh, use okay. relative clauses so the idea is for you to say um, oh, okay. um Brad Pitt and just to give you a hand uh -huh. Brad Pitt uh -huh. is somebody who is famous because he does a lot of charity just to give you an example Okay. Using the relative clause that it's highlighted or that it's capitalized. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, in um, Jennifer Lopez is is an actress and singer who, who is origin is originally of uh, New York. Originally from or from New York. Uh -huh, and uh, she has um, Latin uh, raíces, uh, roots or background, roots, background, and uh, she, she she became became famous uh, for um, the role of. Selena. Okay, and do two instead of four. Do two. Do two. Do two her role as Selena. Her do two her role as yes. Selena, uh, the the singer that was killed. Um, murder. Uh, was murder in the nineties. Back in the nineties. Back in the night is okay. Mm -hmm, very good, very good, Claudia. Good job. Nice. Okay. Okay. Next one. Let's do talk about a place where you can relax. Eliasar, do you want to try doing it? Okay. Sure. Um. Okay. The forest is. Um, the better place for when we have a uh, relaxing time. The forest is a place where you can go and relax? Or say it again? Repeat it again, Elisa, I'm sorry. Okay. 
the for the forest is a, the better place. The best place. The best place mm -hmm. where we get oh yes, where we get at. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, where we can relax. Mm -hmm. The forest is the best place when we when we get a relaxed time. Ah, okay, where we get to relax or where we can <clears throat> relax, just relax. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever you're using yeah. better, remember that better versus best. Better, it's a comparative. You need two things in order to contrast. And best is because you're just talking about forest. What's the difference, guys, between forest and jungle? What's the difference? People tend to confuse forest and jungle. Do you know the difference? Maybe Jung. the animals that live in. Okay. And, and where? The jungle or the forest? I think in the jungle live more wild animals. Okay. Or I don't know, I think. Hmm? And the forest? The forest is a place with more vege vegeta vegetation. Uh -huh. Vegetation, vegetation. And okay. um, I don't know, more. And also we have woods, and I wanted to mention that mm -hmm. other word, but I wanted you to see the difference first. Well, actually the jungle, it's the wild, undiscoverable. Mm -hmm. Even there's places that are undiscoverable. And the forest, it's a place that you can actually manage yourself that people actually know. Even though it's a big place, but people can actually, you know, um, camp. camp or travel or walk, but the jungle, not. There's like private places or, on no or virgin places like in the Amazon, like the Amazon jungle, okay, in where actually people have never or any human has never been there because it's ver it's a virgin place, consider a virgin place. So that's the difference between jungle, not only because of the animals, the wild animals, but more mostly it has to do with the territory itself, that it's inhabited. No humans or no one has ever been there because it's a it's a virgin place versus woods and forests. Now, if you see here on the, on the Google search, a wood is an area covered by trees as a forest. The difference is that wood, I'm sorry, that a forest, it, I'm sorry, a wood is larger than a forest. So a forest can be, just to give you an idea, um, Parque Bicentenario, okay? That part can be a forest, but the woods can be, what do you call it in Chalatenango? No, it's not Chalatenango, so with that, right? The Monte, Monte Cristo. Monte Cristo. Okay, so that's the difference. So Monte Cristo, it's bigger than Bicentenario. Both are like in the same category. They're not jungles. They're not, okay, there's, they're more woods or forests. So the bigger the place, it's called woods. The smaller the place, it's called forest. Did you know that? Or is it something new for you? No, it's new. Okay, great. And I'm glad. And I always like to clarify those out because a lot of times we say like, huh, and so what's the difference with, and I want you to start thinking to yourself because you, sometimes you listen to this words and you're like, and sometimes you have the doubt. So whenever you have a doubt, always ask me or let's go over them. Like the difference between watch and see and look, a lot of people kind of confuse that or the difference between a wood and a forest or even a jungle. A lot of people, so because we're not used to the vocabulary, so it's good always to ask questions, okay, guys? So feel comfortable and let's <sighs> always ask and find out. Um, next, let's continue. Where were we? Where, 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 where. Okay, our next one is, let's see. Um, Edu, can you help me out? Talk about the time when you are surprised. Okay. Um, let me see. Uh, 
I I was very surprised when I passed my exam. <laughs> what exam? But remember that the more you elaborate, the better, because then people will ask you, what exam? What are you talking about? So, yeah. So, the more uh, details? Okay, my math exam. My mm -hmm. uh -huh. math exam. Math exam. Okay, math very good. Exam. Okay, very good. Next one. Ricardo, talk about something that you hate. Something I hate. Sorry, that's I'm sorry for the category. If not, you can go to some to the next stuff. Okay, let's see the next. Talk about a person whose job is difficult. Mm -hmm. Um I think that the doctors have a very difficult job because uh, well you 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 I think that you are that you have in your hands the, the life of somebody. And that that's why I think that is very difficult. The decisions they have to take and carry on, et cetera. Yeah. Right? And okay. Well. Okay, thank you. Let's see who's next on the list. Boy, I'm here. Let me check on the list. Bea, help me. Next one. Peace. Talk about a person whose hobby is interesting. Somebody you know that has an interesting hobby. Or you can go to the next one, talk about something that is funny. <laughs> that, that's funny. Mm -hmm. Something that is funny for you. Something that is funny for you. The, about uh, about place uh, about anything it could be about anything something that you consider you in a personal way that is funny for you yeah. okay. a clown <laughs> Okay. It's okay, Bea. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's okay. Uh, let me see. Marisol, are you there? Hi. Hello. Talk about a time when you were scared. Oh. Right now, we all feel scared. Yeah, or remember yeah. that that shake at 3 a.m. a couple of months back? Mm -hmm. That trembler? That was scary. I am a squirrel of dogs. Of am, what? Oh, I am a squirrel of dogs. I can't listen to you. Can you say that out loud? I am scared of? Um, Todd's. Ah, Todd's. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. We were talking about that in one of the classes. True. Yeah. They're scary. A lot of people are also scared of bats. Bats, cockroaches, rats. What else? Any other animal guys that you're scared of? Like animals? Any animals? Spiders. Of what? Spiders. 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 <laughs> yeah, you're right. I'm scared of snakes. I I remember seeing a very, like, an ana not an anaconda, but it was a very, in Texas, a very big snake that was actually, ah, I just remember it, changing 
skin, it was, I don't know, it was scary. Super scary. To actually see it face to face in the woods, it's actually scary. Okay, next one, let's see. Um, Fatima, help me and do talk about a place where many people, no, maybe, maybe, maybe not the one that many people live. Let's do another. Talk about a person who likes to exercise a lot or a person who is very smart, either or. You can do either or. A person who is very smart. I think, um, well, that I know. That you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the person I think that are smart is my mother and okay. my husband. Because they always find a easy way to solve problems. To solve problems, okay. Uh, when you, when you uh, see uh, a problem and maybe you think uh, many ways but they are difficult so mm -hmm. they whom see the easy way to solve things okay nice thank you guys and this is a question in general do you guys think that you're fast resolving uh, problems or does it take longer than expected? Or do you freak out whenever there's a difficult situation or a problem? Or are you like fast thinker that you think very fast on the solution and resolve it? Or does it take longer than expected for you to do it? Uh, I think that I'm fast sometimes, maybe uh, too impulsive um, taking the the, the decisions, but in general, I think that I, I, I take the decisions fast. Okay, very good. Anybody else? I think it depends. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I say that. It depends on the situation. Of course. Maybe in, in, in cases of there are problem in, at work, Maybe I can um, take a uh, uh, resolution faster, but in, in things that are, I, I don't know, common and I don't know how, how to say, um, cotidianas. Every day, a daily or everyday life uh -huh, situations. Uh -huh. In daily and in everyday situations. Uh -huh. I, I think I lack that, that, um, I don't know, that way, that ability to solve uh, the problems. Okay, thank you. Gia, you were going to say something. Oh, no, um, I'm in agreeing with, I don't know who was talking. Fatima. Uh -huh. Fatima, I'm, I'm agree with Fatima. I think it okay. depends on how used we are to to, to do something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Because if I have the ability, if I'm used to to do, for example, drawing, it's going it's going to be easier for me. But if I'm not used to to draw, or maybe I don't have the abilities. So it's going to be very hard for me. And so it's going to be this way for every situation, work, study, home. <laughs> well, that's the idea. I read an article about September 11th. Um, I was teaching a class, a high school class about this. And one of the topics was September 11th. And um, we were going over the analysis of an article. And it said, the article said that people who survived September 11th, there was a special case that I, I, I just, it came just right to my mind. Uh, this person who was actually about to have breakfast, you know, the, the Twin Towers, they had the restaurant all the way at the top of the towers. So the restaurants were all the way, at the, you had to go all the way up to actually have breakfast. There. He was about to have breakfast for some reason, I, I guess he had a sixth sense, and he started coming down the stairs. 
because the elevator stopped working. He didn't know what was going on. But the article said that actually people who are not well trained or people who are actually people who take longer than expected to take decisions were the ones who actually, uh, uh, you know, perished or, or passed away Dang. or died or died. Yeah. And the ones who didn't that just act, acted just like, okay, let's do this. They just, you know, they started going. So he, in his story, he's actually said that he started going down and every person that he would encounter on the way, going down the stairs, imagine all the stairs. So uh, he encountered, he said, hey, let's go. Don't ask me, let's go. And he was actually, so he started by himself all the way at the top. And by the end, you know, he ended up with like 50 of them. So he was actually able to save 50 guys just by telling, hey, let's go, don't ask. So, you know, no questions asked, right? So the article was focusing a lot on that. So whenever, it's not that we're not smart. It's just that sometimes we try to see the cons and the pros of every situation. But sometimes there's like survival situations and where you have to think fast, right? In like this case. So yeah, I wanted to share that story with you because it got my attention on how he was able to just say, don't ask, let's go. Don't talk, let's go. And and by the end, they, you know, in they ended up with no shoes and their feet were burned, but you know, they're fine now. Because the, the because of the heat, right, and everything. But it was an amazing story. I really like that that article. If I find it, I'm gonna share with you. Okay, let's continue. Let's see. Uh, who else? Who else? Uh, David, tell me, talk about, let me see. Talk about something that you want to learn. This one. Talk about something you want to learn, David. Maybe they, David, are you there? Or anybody wants to help me with that one? Something, Nelson, maybe? Are you there, Nelson? I, I, um, I learn, I learn. Something that you the want books, to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the books, uh, the books, uh, machine, uh, the learning, the, um, Obras, or? Literature? Literature. Uh, the, uh, literature. Uh, the newspaper. Newspaper? Newspaper. Newspaper. But tell me something that you want to learn to the future. Algo que se quiera aprender. Something that you wish to learn. For example, a new language. Do you wish to learn um, how to prepare something, something that you would like to learn, something new. Something new. Mm -hmm. uh, the learning the, the Excel macros. Okay, the learning macros. Uh, macros, Excel. Mm -hmm. uh, the learning uh, AutoCAD. Okay, you would like to learn AutoCAD? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. The learning the uh, Books, 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 general. Okay, so you like to read so, so. a lot. You like to read a lot, right? Yes. Ah, okay. Like to read. Guys, do you it, tell me something that you wish to learn a lot now that you're in quarantine and you're home? Would you like to learn something? There's a lot of free courses out there. Is there something you would like to learn now that you have um, a little bit of free time? English. No free time. <laughs> the the uh, hung, hunger. Yeah, you have a lot of work to do from the days. office, of course. Home, yes. office. Home office. Home office. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow office. Home office. Mm -hmm. office. Remember that even though you're not driving to work, remember just if you were to rest the time that you're spending in traffic. I don't know, getting to work, arriving home, et cetera. It's, it, in a way, it adds up to time that you can actually spend investing, studying something new or learning something new. 
is there something that you guys are learning right now, something new that you're learning that you like to learn that's part of your bucket list or plans? Is there anything, guys? I continue mm -hmm. working, teacher. <laughs> no, yeah, I know. I, and then again, I understand that you guys have a lot of work. But is there, now that you're home, is there something that, because even though you're working your shift, your normal shift, but remember that in a way, since you're not driving and since you're not going outside of your house, you have more hours, more time to be spending doing other things. So is there something that has gotten your attention that you would like to learn? Well, this time or throughout this time, is there something that you're like, oh, now that I'm home, I want to learn how to... And then um, more, more time to sleep. <laughs> well, it's true, it's true. Yeah, you guys... I just kidding. I, I will try to, to read. Uh, I, I want to get the, the habit to, of reading because he's... I haven't read any books since I wasn't on school. Okay. So I'll, I'll try to, uh, this year is one of my, my goals. Okay. To, to read some, to read a book. Okay. So I'll, nice. I'll try in this, in this time. And you can start with short articles. Articles work or fun facts, they work. And then you start getting the habit and then starts growing and growing and growing. Very good. Anybody else wants to learn something this year? Something yeah. new? <laughs> yes, yeah. I, would like, I, would, I would like to learn more about entertaining children <laughs> because my <laughs> two daughters are, are getting bored. Yeah, they are getting bored. <laughs> so. Believe me that that challenge works a lot. The one I showed you at the beginning, it's going to work a lot. Do it. I, yeah. With my kids, it's the same. It's, it's, it's actually the same thing. And I wanted to share something. I'm just going to step. One of the things that you can do with your kids, see, uh, there's a lot of things that you can actually Google and do with them. So this is like something he did. My kids have been doing this. So. Nah. Nice. Not because, and then again, it's not because I'm a teacher. It's just that um, I Google it. So guys, remember, because I try to teach them English, right? And they're like, ah, no. But since they're next to me here, listening to my classes, they're starting to get the language a little bit more. But I'm not forcing them with English. So I'm going with, you know, five minutes crafts, right? So do that. It works. Assign them small projects too. It work, it's working for me. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Wonderful. Yeah, things that you would like, you know. And I learned too. I didn't know how to do this. They did it. And I'm like, wow, how did you do that? They're very creative. <laughs> what do you got me and all that? So it's really, assign them projects and stuff. It's, it's really cool. Okay, guys. Well, time, wow, time ran fast this time. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow, same time. Before you go, um, I, I wanted to ask you, were you able to fix the, was it able to fix this? No, the, the no. teacher. Okay, I will. Any kind work. Yeah, because I tried here, like, it lasts for a whole four days. What was the other answer here? What's a carnival? What's a carnival? I haven't read, I haven't Bye. read the, the other. Hmm? It's, 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 a it's a party. It's a party that lasts for four days. Yeah, it lasts for four days. When is it? Uh, later, later February, earlier March. Late. Late February. February? Uh -huh. Late and February early, wait, and early and March. Early March. Early okay. Early March. It should be giving me even if I write this two downs, it should be giving me this to write, but it's not giving me. Okay, so All I'm gonna send me possibilities are bad. Yeah. Send me, send me the print because I texted him today. But then again, I don't know if they're like really having access to the person if they're working from home. But send me the print screens or the images of what you're getting. So that way we, we, we try to find a solution to this situation. Okay. If not, so just go advance. Okay. Start advancing okay. On, on your other topic. So don't worry about this. One. Okay. Teacher. It, okay. Yeah, the same happens to the point of the middle. 
exam. Oh, in the midterm? Yeah, yeah, the same. It, oh, oh, really? That's not good. I don't remember what um, point is, but this, I find the same situation. I think it's here next. I've been trying a lot of possibilities. Uh, uh, the books is always get rare. Hmm. It's not giving me the option. Where is it? Where's the midterm? Do you know? Uh, go to the menu course. Oh, okay. I have to go back to the. Okay. Well, I'll check it out and I'll, and I'll ask, but if you can send me the print screens, that way I can text Jonathan about it, okay? And that way he can have that result as soon as possible. They can have that result as soon as possible. Like the last time, because I remember for the last module for intermediate one, we had the same problem with the tool and they fixed it right away. But I don't know right now if it's because of all the situations going on, they don't have access to it, but I'm gonna be, oh, here's the midterm. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be on that, okay? I'm going to be on top of that, guys, okay? Okay. okay. Okie dokie, coquetators. I'll see you guys tomorrow, same time. Yes, right. teacher. See you, teacher. Thank you for tuning in, okay? And do that. Remember, try to do it. It takes away your stress, okay? Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, guys. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.